LPC Live 2 includes 8 matrix modes as well as a mode select page. Each of these dictates the functionality of the matrix as well as the 8 buttons on the side of the matrix. For the most part, the upper 8 buttons perform the same function in every mode. Starting from the right, you've got a shift button, a select button, a delete button, and a mute button. These are modifiers. They modify the functionality of other buttons similar to the shift key on your keyboard. The first four buttons are navigation controls, and the functionality of these actually changes depending on the matrix mode, but they always perform navigation related functions. And they're color coded, so they'll change color depending on the navigation function they're performing. You can switch between matrix modes from the mode select page. You can access that by holding down shift and pressing select. Here are the eight buttons on the side select modes, so for example I can select the mixer mode. The mode select page also includes some other functionality. First of all, with the navigation controls, you can navigate scenes and tracks in session view. In arrangement view, you can navigate tracks in the insert marker. This button here is play. This will toggle live's playback state, while live's playing back it functions as a visual metronome. If shift is held down, this will toggle the metronome state. Next to that you've got record, that will toggle session recording in session view. In arrangement view, it will toggle arrangement overdub. And in either view, when shift is held down, it will toggle arrangement record. Next you've got new and that functions similar to the new button in live, so it'll prepare a new scene for recording. And when shift is held down, it'll insert an empty MIDI clip. Next, you've got increase, decrease. By default, these will control tempo in one BPM increments. When shift is held down, they'll control tempo in tenth of a beat increments. On the next row, first you've got global quantization control. This will toggle global quantization on and off. And if you hold this down, you could use the increase, decrease buttons for adjusting the global quantization value. Next, you've got record quantization control. This will toggle record quantization on and off. And when held down, you can use the increase decrease buttons for adjusting the record quantization value. Next, you've got fixed length control. This allows for easily recording clips of a specific length. When held down, you could use the increase decrease buttons for adjusting the length. Here, I'll select one bar. To give you an example of how this works, if I trigger session record, a perfect one bar clip will be recorded. Next to that you've got undo, and in this case it'll undo the recording of that clip. Shift plus undo will redo the last undo. Some of the matrix modes offer control over the selected clip and or the selected track. They can also be locked to a particular clip or track. This first button here will lock to or unlock from the selected clip, and the lock status will be shown in the status bar. This next button will lock to or unlock from the selected track, and again this information is shown in the status bar. This next button will double the contents of the selected MIDI clip, and this button controls the OSD device that was shown in the previous video. By default, it'll toggle the info display on and off, and when shift is held down, it'll toggle the map display on and off. This row of buttons controls the crossfader. You can recenter the crossfader by pressing the two buttons in the center, and when shift is held down, it'll control Q level. In both cases, smoothing is used to avoid abrupt changes in values. The bottom two rows of buttons can access CliffX functionality. If you're not familiar with CliffX, there's a variety of CliffX related videos on this channel, as well as a CliffX section on the forum. In short though, CliffX is a free utility script that provides control over virtually every aspect of Live in a variety of ways. You can specify the CliffX actions these buttons should perform in user preferences. For each button you'll specify the LED color and the CliffX actions to perform. You can also just specify none, which will cause the button to do nothing. To give you some examples of what you can do with these, I can insert devices, randomize and reset device parameters, switch between views, and trigger tap tempo.